Good morning or good afternoon everybody as the case may be and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now as some of you may already know I do a lot of custom model railroad designs for other modelers. One of the features that I often get asked to include in these layouts is a passenger terminal and one of the trap components which is essential for a passenger terminal is the double slip switch. Now there's a couple of manufacturers out there that produce a workable number six double slip but unfortunately a number six double slip is a little too short for full length passenger cars. Passenger trains tend to look hideous snaking through such sharp crossovers. What we really need is a number eight double slip. And there used to be one of these available through Walters but unfortunately their complete line of track components ceased production some time ago now. And although there is a promise of a re-release the availability date has been pushed back numerous times and worse yet the double slip switches are no longer even listed. I did contact Walters and I asked them about their double slips a few weeks ago but I have not received any reply. Now, the last passenger terminal that I designed for a client required as many as seven double slip switches and although the customer was eventually able to track down enough to complete his layout, it is quite possible that these were the last ones available anywhere. And since I cannot in good conscience continue to specify a product on my layout plans that is no longer available, I have to look for an alternative source. And that led me to think of a company known as Fast Tracks, who produces a range of tools and jigs to assist in hand building turnouts. There are also some people out there who build fast tracks turnouts specifically to sell to other modelers. And I did think I had a good contact in the trade, but when I contacted him and asked him about double slips, he declined the challenge, as did the other fast tracks builders that I was able to find. So now since it's looking increasingly as though number eight double slips are no longer available anywhere, I have decided to try building my own. I started hand laying track when I was 12, and I've lost count of how many turnouts I've hand laid since then. So how hard can a double slip really be? I guess I'm about to find out. Stay tuned. Well here is my package from Fast Tracks that arrived earlier today. Let's open it up and take a look inside. Now I've never ordered anything from them before, so I don't really know what to expect. Fairly well packed. There's a rail. It's supposed to be 66 pieces. I, it doesn't look very much, but I guess it's right. Here's the jig. It's not as big as I thought it would be, but I guess it's exactly the size it needs to be. Nice solid piece of aluminum, about a quarter inch thick. And more literature. I also have a couple of track gauges because I don't have anything for code 83. And microengineering rail joiners. Here are the point and stock rail filing guides. A whole lot of tools. Most of these tools I already have, but they're good to have in duplicate. And there's a, a jeweler's saw in here as well that I don't already have. Here are the quick sticks. Oh, each one is in two halves. It's a little bit surprising. Didn't expect that. Oh, there's the plyo bond adhesive. I already have an NMRI standards gauge, but I think it's something that's good to have a duplicate. And since I was already well over the threshold for free shipping, it was a good opportunity to get one. And here are the copper ties for soldering. And the rest is just bubble wrap. Well, I've had a look at everything. The first thing that jumped out at me was the weight of these tools. 
they seem to be very well put together. I'm actually quite impressed with the engineering. I thought I would be because I would heard good reviews from other people. I didn't realize they were quite so heavy. They're just solid chunks of, I presume, hardened steel. They come with their own Allen keys, so I have spares. This one is for forming the point blades and the frog points. And this one is for chamfering the base of the stock rail. With this tool, you need one for each size of turnout or each angle of turnout that you want to build. And this one, you only need one regardless of the angle. The quick sticks are in two pieces, as I mentioned. This was a little surprising, but it, I don't think it really makes any difference. In fact, it might actually make it a lot easier to install them when the time comes, because I only have to put the glue on half at a time. One thing that I'm a little disappointed with, um, I don't know if that's the right word, surprised. Uh, <clears throat> they supply rail in 18 inch lengths. Not long enough. So I'm going to have to join it. I'm thinking I will just put it off centre on the jig. The rail needs to poke about an inch past the end of the quick sticks. And then if I join it on the middle of one of the copper ties, that will probably be the best for maximum strength. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Just adds a few moments to the construction time. In future, I'll just buy the longer lengths and pay the extra shipping. The most expensive single item here, of course, is the jig. And that is very well engineered. The rail fits in perfectly with no slot whatsoever. I bought a pair of track gauges because I wanted to make sure that I could make them perfectly. But I'm actually wondering whether I even need the track gauges to assemble it with. I will have to go through the documentation and find out whether that's recommended or not, or whether they consider that the jig is good enough to do it without. One thing they don't have for the slip switches is what they call a tiebreaker jig which allows you to quickly make all the copper ties exactly the right length. So tomorrow morning I'm going to head out in the workshop and make one of those. I've already designed it in my head and it shouldn't take me too long. Twice. Before I can put these in the jig I've got to cut all the electrical gaps. And the best tool for that is a small triangular file. Although there's a potential trap here and that this last one needs an extra gap right in the middle because it's past the frog. I'm checking each one under the light because any little sliver of copper that remains joined the two sides is going to give me a short later and once the rails are in place it's going to be very difficult to find it. In. That is all the copper ties in place. Next thing I have to do is start building the rail sections. Well, I've got the two frog V's and the two stock rails in. These tools really do make it a lot easier, a lot quicker, and a lot more uniform to file the pieces. So I'm thinking, even if you don't want to use the jigs, these are still worth the investment. Now, I don't have any guard rails yet, either at the frogs or at the toads, but it still runs reasonably well. And that is without guard rails. So I'm re reasonably happy with it so far. And what I said earlier about wanting a longer piece of rail, it really doesn't matter. I can't even remember where I joined it. I think one joint is there and one is there. But they're pretty much invisible and I don't think there's a strength issue. Well, I have now installed the four guard rails and the remaining switch points. That's about all I can do in the jig because the wing rails for the toads 
are not catered for. The jig is designed to build these as moving frogs and I don't want to do that. The next step according to the instructions is to remove it from the jig and cut all the switch rails off back here. Well I've been playing around with the point rails. At first I was a bit concerned about cutting them and making hinges which is what fast tracks recommend for the double slips and I did an experiment to see if I could get away without it and although it kind of works there's too much pressure required to be able to switch it easily so I did the other one the way it's recommended and surprise surprise it's a lot better and actually it didn't take me any longer to do this than it did to fail to do that one so I'm just going to dismantle this and rebuild it the way it's supposed to be and the <coughs> well, I've now installed these two little wing rails I thought it was going to be very difficult because the jig doesn't cater for them but once I got them in the right shape it was a simple matter to hold them in place with one finger and put the NMRA gauge on to get them in the right place and I did think it was going to be a real problem to install them because there was no way of getting to the copper ties with the soldering iron but then I realized I could just solder it to the outside of the running rail so that's what I did and it runs through here pretty smoothly I need a little bit more adjustment here one of them is is picking slightly I will do that later at the moment I'm having to recharge my Dremel because it, uh, the battery got dead and I only have one battery I've still got to cut the electrical gaps around the frogs and get the quick sticks on but before I do that I want to make a modification see where we got these long rails at the overhang in the ends quick sticks go all the way out to here I want to arrange a way of getting an extra copper tie on the end in the right place to hold these rails perfectly straight and engage at the moment they're free to flop around and I'm fearing that accuracy might be an issue if I just go ahead and install them like it is. The people at Fast Track say it's not a problem. I have read about one other user who modified his jig, he mounted it on a sheet of plywood with some, some guides to get the other ties in so that's what I'm going to do. I think it will be better that way and I think once I've built several the time investment to improve that jig will be repaid handsomely. <coughs> well, this is what my extended jig looks like. It's a piece of three quarter inch plywood with blocks to hold the fast tracks jig securely in the middle and then additional pieces at the end with pockets for the last four copper ties. Well the first of the double slips is now finished. As you can see I've hooked it up to a test rig which is basically just a, an eight foot length of three quarter inch plywood balanced on some boxes and four pieces of flex track I don't even know what brand of flex track it is it's stuff that I've had for a long time and my test train is a full length passenger car with 12 wheel trucks and two short freight cars so, but I'm going to go in both directions through all four routes and check for any imperfect running I'm watching all the trucks as they go through and I didn't see any jolting whatsoever of course I, I don't have switch machines hooked up so I've got to make sure that the switch points are fully over by hand So the result of that is that the mechanical test is perfect. I had a test meter on it yesterday to make sure that I have no shorts and that was also perfect. So I'm going to call that one done. It took me quite a long time to build it, far too long to be commercially viable, but it was my first experience with the fast tracks jigs and I was still working out how to use them. I think now that I know all the steps involved, what order to do everything, all the traps to avoid falling into and also that I have a finished one to look at 
I think it should be a lot more efficient now. So I'm going to do a batch of them and time myself and see how I get along. Well the batch build is going quite well. I think I'm about five hours into the project right now and although it may not look as though I've got much progress, let me walk, let me walk over to the other bench. We can see that I already have most of the necessary parts prefabricated. What I'm, what I'm doing is every time I get to a step of the process that needs a new part, I'm fabricating enough to do five. So that once this one rolls off the production line, the others should follow in quick succession. The last thing I did on this project was to shape the closure rails, which are the most time consuming part so far, because both ends have to be specially shaped and they've got cutouts in the middle where they become stock rails. Well, as you can see, I've now built another batch of five. So I have six double slips, same. And I also built a single slip using the same jig. When I did the testing, there was a little bit of adjustment that I needed on some of the switch points. And one of them had to go back to the workbench. But I think that's a pretty good average. One out of seven needing some rework. And they've now been fully tested and they're working flawlessly. Since I don't actually have an immediate use for them, I'm just going to put them up for sale on my website, superiormodelrailroads.com. And since the Walters double slip is pretty much no longer available, and as far as I'm aware, no one's ever built a single, I will just make them available to all my viewers. Obviously, with a high-quality hand-built product, I cannot match the recommended price of the ready-to-lay ones. But even those went up dramatically. The last one I saw advertised on eBay, the guy wanted over $150 for it. Well, last time I looked on the Walters website, the re-release of their regular turnouts had been pushed back indefinitely. So with that in mind, I've decided that I'm going to start building regular turnouts as well. I've already ordered the jig for the number 7 turnouts because that's a size that never has been available in ready to lay format so I'm going to work on those soon by the time this video goes live they should be available and if you want any other sizes as well just send me a private message through my website and I will give you a price so that's all for this week I hope this was useful and I hope to see you again next week thanks for watching and bye for now